All right, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create and export and apply the displacement and normal map from your dinosaur in ZBrush to Unreal Engine. So here we have a dinosaur uh, that has high subdivision and low subdivision level. And what we want to do is to capture all of that difference of detail between these various levels in the displacement and normal maps. So to do that, we'll come down to subdivision level one, the, the smallest subdivision. We'll want to verify that there is, in fact, a UV map on this. This will not work unless we have a UV map. Um, and we're just ignoring all the other sub tools there for the moment. And what we're going to do is we're going to come into uh, Z plugin and we're going to use the multi map exporter option. So as we export these out, we can export both the displacement and normal map here. By the way, I am using ZBrush version 2021.6.4 uh, and I find that in ZBrush 2021, uh, exporting these maps is so much faster than in previous versions of ZBrush. What might have taken me 20 minutes to export a single map in the past, or somewhere between 10 and 20 minutes, takes me about a minute now, which is vastly faster. So if you have the option to work with ZBrush 2021, I recommend it. Um, and we are going to go in and we are going to just check our export options real quick. So for the displacement map, we want to make sure that we're exporting it from the current subdivision level, subdivision level 1. Um, adaptive, smooth UV, three channel, that's all good. Very important, mid is set to zero here. And that scale and intensity are both set to one. Now for the normal map, check the options here. Again, subdivision level one is where we want to create this from. And make sure tangent, adaptive, smooth UV, and smooth normals are all on. All right, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create all maps. Um, I've already done this. They are saved out in another folder. Um, and they will just be used to, uh, to work from this so I don't have to do this again. Um, then, uh, basically here's what they look like when they come out. So um, let's pull them up here real quick. All right, so this is our displacement map. It's uh, just a grayscale map. And this is our normal map. All right, I renamed them. ZBrush exports them out with some funky names. So uh, DM for displacement map, NM for normal map. The other thing you'll want to do is, of course, to export out your mesh here at subdivision level one. And you'll want to bring this into Maya and triangulate it in Maya. You'll also want to make sure that the normals are soft um, or smoothed out, basically. And um, you'll want to export that out of Maya as an FBX file. Make sure that you keep those smoothing groups enabled in the FBX file. And then you bring that inside of Unreal. All right, cool. So in Unreal then, um, right now I have a setup scene set up here where I just have that triangulated version of the mesh. Um, if I show that to you here, all right, it's our triangulated uh, mesh. And we bring um, into this here, we will bring um, the normal maps and the displacement maps. I have some base, just really basic lighting going on in this scene, I have a rect light there and I have a skylight that's kind of giving some overall illumination. It's a bit bright at the moment, so I might just set that down a bit. Okay. Um, and then I also have a uh, post-process volume in the scene. So just a basic setup. And what I want to do is bring in that displacement normal map, like I said. So I'm just going to drag and drop them into my scene. There they go. All right. And we want to uh, create a new material. So this will be our mdino. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, drop that onto our dinosaur here. Okay, and we'll want to go in and make sure that we're uh, creating some color for this. So hold down three and click on that. Um, connect this out to our base color there. And let's just give it, I'm just gonna give it a dark kind of gray for now. Apply that to our scene. Okay, cool. So uh, the first one that we're going to set up is going to be the displacement map. It's a more difficult one to set up. So uh, in order to apply displacement to this, we need to be able to have the option for displacement, which right now you can see is grayed out, both world displacement and tessellation multiplier. To get those enabled, we need to come down, select the material, come down in the details panel here. Toward the bottom, you'll find an option for tessellation. You want to set the tessellation to PN triangles. And adaptive tessellation is fine. Max displacement might just set this to like six. And 
that will now give us the option here for both of those uh, world displacement and tessellation multiplier that we did not previously have. Now what I can do is just drag and drop my displacement map into this uh, panel, and we need to connect it. Now, I, unfortunately, I can't just connect um, the map into the world displacement because it won't work. So what we need to do is create a multiply node And we also need to create a node that samples the uh, vertex information uh, and the normal information off of this mesh. So hold on, click tab, I'll choose vertex. And we want vertex normal WS. And the way that this works is that we want uh, to multiply the normal information by the map information. So we'll plug the normal information into input A, take the map, put that into input B. And we'll plug that now, the output of that, into world displacement. Click apply here. All right. We might start to see a little bit of change going on here. It's very subtle because this displacement is not going to be really huge. Uh, but we may also want to be able to control the degree to which this displacement is applied as opposed to just directly from the map. So one thing we can do is we can change the scaling of this. So let's go ahead and create another multiply node. And we're going to multiply um, the scale, or basically we're going to multiply the um, impact of this before we put it in through the vertex normal information. So um, let's go in and we'll click create a scalar. Um, and it's just going to be a scalar parameter. Now, this scalar. We're going to leave as a default, or basically the default value will be 1. Our min can be 0, our max can be something like 6. Right? It's probably just gigantic, but we don't need to really worry about that. What's cool about these scalars is that if you create an instance of your material later on, these just become little options. Um, whenever you click on that material instance, you can adjust these options without having to come into the material editor itself, which is quite nice. So I'll put that into input B. Take this one here, put that into input A. All right, and now instead of this going into B here, we'll take the output of this. All right, so it's passing through this multiply node first. Um, apply that real quick. Now, what we can do is we take a look at what we're getting as our output here. Um, our default value right now is set to one, but if I start to scale this up, you can see that the impact of that uh, displacement map is really coming in heavy there. So if I turn that to zero, you can see this is more or less what it looks like without the map. Uh, put it on one, that's what it looks like with the map. That's twice as much. We probably only really need one. Um, that's just, you know, usually that, that's correct. But if you needed to do some fine scale adjustment, maybe 1.2 or something like that, uh, you could. So this is really just for if you really want to get in there and to finely adjust things. All right, cool. So that pretty much does our uh, set up for our displacement map. Now what the displacement map is doing primarily here inside of Unreal, it's not giving us a lot of detail on the mesh, um, but it is giving us uh, some extra displacement, you know, physical displacement that's going on here. There's a difference between a displacement map and a normal map. Normal map will give us the appearance of a lot of detail, but it does not actually affect the um, contour of the mesh, whereas a displacement map here physically goes in and adjusts the, uh, you know, three-dimensionality of this mesh, right? So we want to kind of combine those two things together. Now, one other little thing that we could do in here is right now we have a mesh that is uh, relatively low res. And if we try to increase the tessellation on this mesh, we might get slightly better results. So I'm just going to really quickly go in and create a, another uh, scalar node. So scalar. All right. And um, this one here, default value will set to 1. Min value will set to 1. Max value will set to something like 6. And let's plug that into the tessellation multiplier. All right. And if I take this and let's just put that to 6 and hit apply, let's see if this will work. There we go. Okay. So what that's done now, if we take this down to something like four, hit apply. 
what it's doing is it is um, multiplying or basically smoothing out the mesh. So at one, that's what our mesh looks like by default. At two, that's where uh, one level of smoothing is basically come in. We tessellated everything. Uh, three, you know, if we took this up to something like four or five or even six, it's a super dense mesh now. It will probably give us slightly better results um, with our displacement, All right? Because if I compare what I have right now versus a lower tessellation, what does that look like? Yeah, it's very minimal, but depending on the degree of, of um, uh, the degree of the impact of this thing, like if I put this up a lot higher to some like three, I'd probably want to have that much uh, extra geometry in there, right? You can see that there's if the tessellation is much lower, we we start to uh, not be able to see as much of that detail. And I kind of just look here. So it's basically it's around three is where we don't notice the difference anymore. So there's no real benefit to going above three in the tessellation. So I'll put this value back down to one for the displacement. Tessellation is set to three. There we go. Now we can plug in the normal map. All right, so um, let's go in and before I do anything else, I'm just gonna set my default value here on the displacement map down to zero so that we um, can just look at the normal map for what it is. All right, so let's drop the normal map in here. There's another texture sample node. Can move these other guys out of the way, maybe. Probably end up creating a better grouping of things here, but keep it nice and simple for now. All right, and so this node is just going to plug directly into the normal node. All right, so what do we get when this happens? Okay, so let's have a look at this real quick. We have all that high detail information coming in here, but there is a small problem. Some of this information has some pretty strong seams going on, and uh, this is fortunately is an easy thing for us to fix. We don't have to regenerate the maps. What we need to do is to come into the file itself. I'm just going to double click on the file itself. And that's going to load uh, the file in the material editor. And in here, I need to come under the texture section. Uh, there may be a little button that you have to click on to expand this out, like this button right here. What you want to do is you want to come in and choose flip green channel under texture. And when I do that, you'll notice that the problem goes away, right? which is really nice. I'm just gonna, on the other screen here, I'm just gonna turn it on and off just so that we can see the difference, All right? So you can see that the green channel here basically is kind of like pushing in as, as opposed to pulling out and it's creating some real big problems. So uh, that's, our, that's our solution to that. Um, I'll just go in and I'll save that, close out of that there. And uh, that has now given us all that information that we wanted from the normal map. Very simple. All right, so let's just go back in and on here, uh, let's re-enable our displacement map. And it's gonna, all I'm gonna do is change the value of uh, the default value here to one, but I'm gonna do that on this other screen so we can see it happen interactively. So typing in one now, and there we go. So that is our displacement and normal maps applied here inside of Unreal Engine. Hope that helps, and good luck.